On this episode of iRacing TV, we start with the current cars and tracks in development as well as the latest build news. Then we meet up with Dave Malthrop as he shares his experiences scanning race circuits in all corners of the globe for iRacing, including his recent visits to some major circuits in Japan. Continuing our essentials guides to getting the most out of iRacing, Sean Siff will be giving a rundown on everything you need to know about using the hosted session service. And to round out this episode, iRacing president Tony Gardner reflects on a successful 2010 and outlines the path for iRacing members and the service in his State of the Sport address. Stay tuned for this and more on iRacing TV. Hi everybody, my name's Sean, this is Kevin. Welcome back to another segment of iRacing News. Uh, we hope you all had a great holiday and we're all looking forward here at the office to 2011. It should be a very exciting year. Kevin, why don't you start us out with some uh, car and track updates? Sure, happy to. Uh, first thing I wanted to announce was that, the, that we've signed a, a contract with uh, Honda and we have the Acura ARX-01C coming to the uh, sim. That's the LMP2 car, uh, one that Highcroft drives. So you guys have probably seen that in ALMS uh, on television. Uh, it's a fantastic car, really excited about that coming to the sim. That should be available sometime late in 2011. We don't have an exact date, uh, just starting the process to get that built, but uh, definitely in the works now. Oh, very exciting news. Be great for our mixed class racing series. Absolutely. Uh, next thing I wanted to mention is uh, probably the worst kept secret, which is that we've signed a contract with Interlagos, a uh, fantastic track in Brazil probably one of the premier tracks uh, in the world, certainly in, in South America. Uh, that'll get scanned soon and built. The, tra the track is very anxious for us to get working on it. They're really into what we're doing, which is great. Uh, and we'll have that track brought to you uh, sometime uh, probably in the second half of 2011. So that's, that's very cool as well. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll give you guys updates as, uh, as we get them. Great. And the third bit of content news is that the Sprint car will be available with the next build. So that's uh, coming up uh, in just a few weeks at the end of January, uh, and that'll be a lot of fun for all you oval guys. That car's uh, pretty powerful. Should be a lot of fun to throw that around the track. It's going to be a handful. What do you have, Sean, for uh, the rest of the build news? So, build news. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, let's start with uh, the way sound is processed currently in our uh, simulator is uh, with something called direct sound. Uh, we're changing that now to be run by FMOD, which is another uh, sound card or sound processor. In other words, what's going to happen for, for you at home on your, uh, in your iRacing experience is that the sounds that we process in our build are going to be better. There's going to be more dynamic volume, uh, better range, and there'll be more uh, adjustability uh, within the sim. So we expect to see that. Uh, and, and again, this will be something that's starting with this build, and we uh, expect to continue to improve that uh, over 2000. That's great news. Great news. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next item is damage. Uh, right now, the, the, our developers are starting a six-month process uh, to improve the way damage is modeled and, and the repair process that, that uh, you can experience as a uh, racer in iRacing. So specifically what that means is when your car uh, gets damaged uh, by a, you know, let's say you have contact with a, a tire wall uh, or uh, another fixed surface, um, if you bend a tie rod or something uh, kind of like that, you can actually go back into the pits and you can have that damage repaired. Uh, you'll be assigned a penalty in an amount of time, uh, but again, the car will return to uh, operating condition uh, as long as it's not a serious uh, issue like you know, if you blow your engine. That, that's an item that won't be repairable uh, in a session. Right. I'm real excited about this one because I'm known to have uh, contact here or there and I'll be able to finish a lot more races, which is... Uh exciting for me. Uh, I'm, I'm right there with you, Kevin. We'll probably be testing this out um, wh whether we want we to We should definitely be in the alpha test for this. Yes, agreed. Uh, and finally, our, our the last piece of, of information for you is that our tire model uh, is now in testing. It's in alpha testing. Uh, I should say that it's not going to make the new build, but the cool thing is that uh, it, it is in testing. Our alpha testers are working on it right now and they expect to uh, have it ready as, as soon as they can, definitely sometime in 2011. So uh, we're excited to see that. Uh, and I actually, I got to try the, the COT, the Impala uh, Class A uh, at Charlotte with a new tire model uh, last night. It was pretty exciting. No, that's great. Uh, we appreciate your patience, uh, but we just really want to let you know that there is progress being made and uh, we'll get it to you as soon as we can. Absolutely. And that's about all the news we have for you. Uh, again, we both appreciate you uh, tuning in to the uh, new segment here and we'll look forward to bringing you more news uh, in the coming months. Absolutely. Happy uh, New Year. Happy New Year. I'm 
Dave Bolthrop, the Laser Scan Project Manager for iRacing.com here in Bedford, Mass. I've been here since September of 2004 and have done approximately all the racetracks with a couple more that are in the background, which uh, gives us one, two, about 12 international tracks and about 50 domestic tracks. I got started on the photography part of it uh, by renting a camera one day and going to an autocross at the local supermarket. Um, that photo from the autocross ended up getting the front page of the sports section. Uh, it had some special effects that I've never been able to recreate because I don't know how I got them in the first place. And I started taking pictures at Lime Rock some 40 years ago. Uh, I went there for the Trans Am in its heydays and uh, it caught the bug. The scanning is basically a digital reproduction or a clone of the exact surface. With Leica scanning equipment, uh, which is geo system scan equipment, is used so that every bump, every tree, every rock, everything that is there when we show up at the premise is able to be duplicated. Um, and then after the point cloud is finished, which is what we do similar to what's, this is a point cloud of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, with proprietary software, the engineers are able to take that data and turn it into a bump map, which is what is actually raced on in, in the simulation. And the texture artists, with the thousands of photos that are taken at each facility, are able to recreate the scenery. When you scan it, it's more than setting up the equipment. What becomes important is that the scanner must be able, in its location, to see every part of the racing surface or surface where a car would run off and not have any black holes caused by shadows because the laser is a line of sight signal so if there is a mound of dirt or grass that the scanner, scanner can't see by then that becomes a black hole there's no data there uh, so the important part is to set the scanner up on every scan so that you don't lose anything that can be seen from the race car or that the race car would go on between the guardrails and the walls um, so that you have an accurate off-track experience or on track for instance shooting around a corner if you're shooting behind the curbing you don't want the curbing to be hiding part of the track surface with a shadow because your race car is going to run on that curbing I mean that's why it's there um, and so it's important that everything be placed and that after it's place that you go back and look at the screenshot to make sure there isn't any data missing in any sections and if there is then you have to move the scanner and get that area that is missing um, otherwise we wouldn't have the accuracy we would do. Our, mo our most recent project was the 37 day scan of four venues in Japan Suzuka, Motigi, Okayama and Sakuba. Um, it was basically a logistic nightmare uh, we had a, a set amount of time for each track and had to be at that track at that time. Uh, we were blessed with a typhoon. We had a slight earthquake, some rain, and a language barrier. Um, but we were able to get everything done on time. Uh, we never missed a deadline. We did show up to the last track a day early. Um, but I guess the hardest part of it was a lack of daylight because these facilities are so widely used in Japan there wasn't a day that the track wasn't in use and so collecting the photo images was difficult because you had a small window in the morning sometimes you had a lunch break uh, and if you were really fortunate they quit early and you got a little bit done before dark um, but as frustrating as it can be once you get home and see the finished product you forget all about the frustration because it's so gratifying that you were as hard as the job might have been because of the conditions the quality of the product when you get done and how it comes out after everybody from the iRacing family is done with it is so gratifying that it makes the bad days all good. Phillip Island, uh, the wallabies, uh, the little penguins, uh, the koalas, the weather, uh, being on the cliffs on the ocean for a week, uh, that was it was just it was picturesque I mean you love to go to work every day we started in the daylight we worked in the darkness and all night long but it was that was probably the most memorable was the uh, Phillip Island 
I don't think there have been any other than maybe New Jersey Motorsports Park where out of the three weeks we were there, about 14 days we had rain. Um, that's probably, and Oren, yeah, Oren Park in England was also another track where it was memorable because it's 20 miles from the wettest place in the United Kingdom. And it t took us 21 days to do seven days worth of work because of rain. Um, so those were memorable because of the weather conditions. Phillip Island, just because it's so beautiful. I don't think I've been sent anywhere that I didn't like or was unhappy when I was there. I go back to Formula One. I went to all the races at Watkins Glen in the 70s. Um, I did all the Formula One races at Long Beach. I was probably a Formula One fan long before I was a NASCAR fan. Spa, you know, I never thought I'd ever go there. It was just, you know, another famous F1 course. And it's so amazing, it's so large. The elevation changes are, are so great. Uh, the weather is inconsistent on the entire facility. It can be raining on one part of the facility and dry in the other. Unfortunately, when we were there, we were in the part that it was raining. Uh, <laughs> we'd already done the part that was dry. Um, and it, just to see how the conditions affect that track, uh, I don't remember what the exact change in elevation and how long it goes for, but it stopped raining and f we stayed at the track for four and a half hours after it stopped raining and the water never stopped running downhill. I mean, we were unable, to, because of the reflectivity of the surface, to continue the scan that night. We finally had to go home after four hours because it still was running down. So, you know, something so rich in history, uh, so memorable because of its weather conditions and to experience that, and to get to know the facility the way you do, because not only do we scan every inch of the track, but we photograph every inch of the track, which means while I was there, I probably walked spa four laps or five laps, you know, so I, I did at least 20 miles, uh, or did a slight marathon walking, um, to, first to get the track surface, then to get the track side objects, then to get the buildings, then to get the mountains and stuff. So um, it's, it's just, you know, as grown up as a motorsports fan, to get to go to these facilities and get involved with these facilities as much as you do to, uh, you know, I can look at the facility if one of the guys are working in art, they can ask me, do you know where this is? And 99% of the time, if it's one corner, I know where it is because you just spent so much time in that one position trying to make sure that we have everything we need to properly build these simulations. To look at a facility that somebody else has done and say, no, that's not right. That's not there or, or something else is there. Uh, it's, it's, I become a critic of, of some of the, the games because I know what's really there and, and it's not exact. I've gotten so used to the perfection of our exact the simulations that you know, it frustrates me when I'm driving somebody's game and I go to turn in there and the turn's not there. <laughs> there is a lot of the things that we've scanned. The Dale Jr. car, uh, the Sprint Cup car that we scanned, uh, the yet to be released, but the 2011 nationwide car. Um, of course, uh, one of the principals in our company, John Henry, owner, half owner of Rush Fenway, won the Daytona 500, um, and that's uh, the car that won the Daytona 500. And the front page from one of the newspapers that I take pictures for, uh, capturing John and the team after winning the Daytona 500. Uh, some s pieces of some race tracks that we've scanned, some of them commercial pieces, some of them I brought back myself. <laughs> uh, the McDonald's Indy car that was driven by Ray Hall, I believe, at the time. Uh, the Corvette, uh, a couple of Riley's, the Miller Mustang. The Morgan we scanned, it probably will never be built, but it was one of the cars that I learned to scan on. And then we, sc we scanned the Lotus 79 what I have there is not a Lotus 79, but a replica signed by Mario Andretti of the helmet he wore when he drove the Lotus 79. 
So those are just a few mementos of either vehicles we have scanned or pieces of track from tracks we've scanned. Hi, I'm Sean Siff. In this episode's how-to segment, we're gonna cover hosted racing and then how to join a hosted race. There's a lot of different facets to it, so we're gonna take you through each step and make sure it's clear when we're done. When it's time to load up your first hosted race session, you have to first locate uh, the gray box on our webpage. Uh, just use the gray nav bar here, and you wanna go to hosted, then you want to go down to host a race. Now after that loads, uh, one of the things that we get probably the most questions about is how to increase your balance th so that you can uh, pay for the session. To do that, you want to locate this gray bar right over here called increase balance. So to first step, you want to click that. It brings you up to the gift certificate page. And this is when you can uh, uh, enter a gift certificate amount so you can choose how much you'd like to purchase. Again, each race session is only $3, but your minimum amount is 10. Uh, so uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not gonna uh, actually enter my credit card information here, but this is what you would do, and then you would add it to the cart and continue through the session. What would happen is that you'd be given a code for the amount of money that, uh, that you purchased. And what you do with that code is very important, so now I'll show you. Once you have your code, you want to go up to View Cart. Again, we're back on the member homepage. Then you want to apply the code you were given. So there's my code right there. I'm going to click Apply. And it just lets me know that this will uh, be visible in my cart when I'm all set. I'm going to confirm this. And proceed. I'm all set now, so I'll click Finish and now I've just added successfully $15 of credit to my account. Now I've got enough credit uh, to go and actually host a session. The first step that we'd like to take now that it's time to make a hosted session uh, is to title the session. Uh, fortunately, I get to race with my colleague Kevin every Wednesday night in our Ren Sport Racing League, so I'm gonna mirror this example after one of our uh, previous races. Again, we want to start with the session name. So I'm going to just type this in here. We're going to call this Rent Sport Racing League. And we'll go to New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Uh, one of the great features we have for you is that you can make the session private. Uh, and that allows you to distribute the password that you choose to uh, all of the members uh, that you would like to have join you in the session. It's also easy just to make the session public. In other words, you don't add a password. So for this example, we will add a password, and I'll add my favorite password, which is 1234, and I'll just make sure that I've typed that in correctly. Once you've chosen your password for your session, the next step is to go into this box here and choose your server. Uh, it defaults to the Australian server, but if you're racing from anywhere in North America or Europe, you should probably select the US server. Next, it's onto the track. Again, for this example, we're gonna use New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So I'm gonna go down and find that in the list, and now it populates. One quick note about track selection. If you choose a track, let's say, uh, like Richmond International Raceway, you'll notice that night lighting comes up as an option. To have your race at night, all you have to do is click the, the square there, and it will uh, be a night race for you. We'll go back to New Hampshire. Next, it's onto your car selection. For this example, I'd like to race the Ford Mustang. Uh, but one of the neat features of hosted racing is that you can add an additional three cars total to your hosted race. You'll see that you can choose how the cars are scored and classed. Uh, right now, I've got all cars in a single class, meaning all three race cars will compete against each other for uh, top honors. Also, you can just choose one car per class, like true multi-class racing. Fixed setup racing is optional here in hosted racing. All you have to do is select it, and you'll see that a, a new screen here populates. Uh, and what this allows me to do is to select a specific 
qualifying setup and race setup for this race car. To do that, I just have to uh, click SEL for select. And, you'll, and what iRacing will do is it will look for setups on your computer. Uh, we've got a New Hampshire Motor Speedway set already loaded. So I'm gonna click that. Then you wanna go down to upload. And then you can uh, leave any notes you'd like. Click apply. And you'll see that it na it's now populating under my setups. Uh, also, you can see that iRacing has a baseline setup for this car. But again, for this example, we're gonna choose this one. Then the, uh, the green box will light up. You'll hit select and you'll see that it's here under qualifying. Uh, also, you can choose the same setup for racing. Since it's already loaded onto your computer, all you need to do is click it and then hit select. And now you've got identical setups for both racing and qualifying. Once you've chosen your car, now you can choose your session type. With hosted racing, we offer four different options. We'll start with open practice only. Simply, all it means is that you and your friends can uh, just practice. There won't be any racing. Uh, now you can also select your, your, the amount of time that you'd like to run the session. Uh, we've got a minimum of 10 minutes all the way up to 240 minutes. The second option is open practice plus loan qualifier plus race. Again, you want to start by choosing your practice time. We'll, we'll stay with 30 minutes. Because this is a loan qualifier, it means that you will be the only car on the track for qualifying, even though all, all the drivers in your session will be qualifying as well. We'll choose three laps. And then you can set the uh, maximum number of laps that you want for the race, or whatever you'd like. So we'll, we'll actually go to 60 laps. The third option is open practice plus open qualifier plus race. Again, uh, pretty simple, just choose your practice time, the amount of open qualifying you want, meaning that you and all of the drivers in the session will be out on the track at the same time qualifying together. Then again, you can just uh, select the amount of laps you'd like the race to be. We'll, we'll stay with 60. Finally, you can choose open qualifier plus race. Uh, again, you've got some uh, decent options here for how long you'd like the qualifying session to be. Five through 30 minutes are the, your options. And then you can select the, the amount of laps that you'd like to race for. Uh, once you've set the uh, type of race you'd like, to, uh, you'd like to run, you can choose between rolling start and a standing start. Keep in mind that during a rolling start, you actually will follow the pace car for one full lap, and then uh, you're, you'll be given the green flag. Green, green, green. It's important to consider when uh, you're deciding how much fuel you want to put in the race car. Also, you've got a standing start. This is probably a little bit more common with open wheel and sports car racing, but uh, choose the one that you'd like to try. Next, the amount of fast toes. This is always important. Uh, at least in Ren Sport, we like to leave it on unlimited just to keep it more fun. But you can uh, have uh, as few as zero fast toes, meaning if you uh, do uh, incur a little bit of damage onto your race car, uh, it's not able to be repaired. Again, your choice here. We'll leave it unlimited. Cautions. For uh, a race of this, uh, this type, you can, choose with, uh, you can choose full course cautions on or off. Uh, we'll leave it off for the moment. Restarts is your final option. Again, this will only matter to you if you've chosen full course cautions on. Now, with restarts, you can choose single file, or you can choose file, double file rather, with the cars that have been lapped on the inside line, or you can choose double file restarts with the cars that have been lapped at the back of the line. Uh, usually that's the most common one that, uh, that we use here around the office, but again, the option's totally up to you, however, however you want to do it. Finally, you can uh, type in your description of the event. Any driver that's uh, on the hosted racing screen can read your description. Um, you know, probably not a good place to leave the password information if you want to keep the session private. But you can also describe a little bit more about your session, if it's a public session, to try to get more iRacers into that session with you. Uh, and then when you're ready, you want to go to the Purchase and Race Now screen. Um, this is what this is going to do is it's going to summarize all of the options that you've set up, uh, the name, password, and all the other information. And what you want to do from there is make sure you click Confirm. If you see something that's a mistake, you can also go in and click Edit. Everything looks good, so I'm going to hit Confirm. And in just a moment, the server will populate your session. 
Now, one interesting thing to note is that if you, uh, if you want, if you're in a league or you're the admin of a league, uh, you can use this nice, helpful Use Last se Settings button. The Use Last Settings button basically loads in everything that you did before. It remembers it. So you can simply click the button and then go Purchase in Race Now. Again, if you wanted to do that, you just click Confirm. Otherwise, you could, cl could click Edit if you want to make any changes. Now let's go see if that session's loaded up. I'm going to go back up here to my tab that says Join a Race. I'm going to click it. And you'll see my name here. This is my session. It's our Rensport Racing League. Again, if you scroll your mouse over the, uh, the bars here, it'll read out the entire title and any other information you've loaded. Uh, this, uh, this green uh, lock icon means that I do have to enter my password. So to do that, I'll just put my mouse up there and enter my secret password. And I'll click Join Session Now. And you're going to see it load up here, and when this goes green, you're all set to join the session and race. I just want to close with a few quick points about hosted racing. It's important to remember that in a hosted session, I rating and safety rating do not apply and are not calculated, so keep that in mind. Another important point is that your license level doesn't matter in a hosted session, so you can race uh, a race car that you currently, uh, in a public series, aren't able to race. Finally, and probably the most important point is, our code of conduct still applies to any hosted racing event. So have fun and be respectful to the other drivers and enjoy your session. Thanks for watching. Well, hi, it's great to be on another episode of iRacing TV. And um, so the guys asked me to uh, spend a few minutes, uh, sort of a state of the union with iRacing, talking about uh, the 2010 year and, and the future. And um, I also want to take this, take a moment to uh, wish all of our members a happy and, he and healthy uh, new year. Um, but jumping right into uh, 2010, it was a great year for iRacing. Um, we added 8,000 new members to the service. Um, during the course of the year, so we're well over 20,000 members at this point, and uh, really excited about that. Um, and we, we added a, a ton of new things to the service, and uh, just to go through a few of the uh, uh, bigger things that we did in 2010, we added a bunch of different types of new racing. We had fixed setup racing, mixed class racing, uh, night racing. Um, we had broadcast functionality, um, working with our friends at PSR TV. Uh, we put in the split time system, we added the transmission model, um, we added uh, a lot of graphic improvements, we, we're calling it phase one and shading and whatnot, and we have three or four more phases to go to our graphic, graphics model. Um, we added spectator mode, we added friends viewing, which a lot of people liked, uh, we added admin functionality for hosted uh, sessions, um, we added website improvements, um, we put in a new forum, which we still have work to do on that. Uh, we did a lot of performance and stability improvements in the back end that hopefully people start to notice. The whole site's faster, um, the frame rates are better, and uh, the, the site's getting more and more stable. So we've put a lot of investment into that. Uh, we also uh, rolled out uh, commercial versions of iRacing, um, which just gets uh, more and more people to see the product. We did as part of that our Hall of Fame project. So there's a lot of things from uh, just improving the product that we did during 2010 and we'll continue to do so uh, in 2011 and going forward. Uh, we also added seven new tracks this year um, in 2010. You know we had uh, Mid-Ohio, Phillips Island, Zanvoort, Spa, Dover, Pocono, Thompson. Um, we had the same number of cars as well. We had, uh, depending on how you look at it, six or seven new cars. Um, including the Mustang, the Tour Modified, the Mazda, the Street Stock, uh, the Williams car, the V8 Supercar. But, uh, but enough of what we did, I think people are probably more interested in what we're going to do in the future. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's watch Gregor Hutu win.
in Silverstone, who was crowned world champion at the last race in Indy, pulls off his 15th win in 16th. Well, actually, before I get into uh, looking down the road and, and the vision of iRacing and where we're heading, um, I thought I'd take a second to also not just read a laundry list of all the things we did to the product in 2010, but also to talk about the competition itself. Um, we run over 1,500 races per week, but I thought I'd spend a minute to talk about um, a, a few things that we worked on uh, for years, and it was great to see them kind of finally come to fruition, which was uh, um, rolling out our NASCAR, uh, our NASCAR World Championship Series and our Road Racing World Championship Series. So it was great to crown our first champions, Richard Towler, uh, on the NASCAR side and seeing that whole thing go down. I'm sure you guys saw the videos of that. Uh, saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. present him the trophy and his check at the race. Uh, and it was also great to crown uh, Gregor Hutu on the roadside. Um, him just dominating that series from start to finish uh, was really exciting. Uh, there was a lot of other things that happened during the year. Uh, for example, uh, Wyatt Gooden um, using sim racing and the Volkswagen, uh, our Volkswagen series to gain entry into uh, the, T the real world TDI Cup series through our partnership with Volkswagen um, and go in there and win races in the real world. Um, it was unbelievable. He finished third overall. Um, we had the Intel series and, and uh, that opportunity uh, where uh, there's 10 uh, I races heading to Germany for close to $30,000 in prize money. Um, so we look for, you know, it was really cool to see some of those things uh, that we worked hard on come to fruition. We have a bunch more things like that planned in the future with other racing organizations. Um, so it was great. We had a bunch of uh, a whole new slew of uh, real world racers join I racing uh, for both to, to stay sharp and for fun and the other way around a bunch of sim racers that got their feet wet uh, young young old alike and took that back out to the track gained some confidence and then went out on the track and raced uh, the documentary for uh, Gregor Hutu was a good example of that so that was really uh, really great and uh, that experiment was pretty cool and we looked to do more of that down the road but hopefully you all saw, saw that uh, experiment take place um, so enough about 2010 uh, let's move on to 2011 and talk about the future. With the championship, that'll go to number seven of Richard Tower. RT is ten thousand dollars richer. So uh, let's talk about the future of iRacing and in the short-term vision, at least. Um, and really, what's you know, obviously the, the main thing uh, is that we're gonna we're very committed to press on with improvements to the product, uh, press on with new functionality, new content, and keep making the service and the product better and better. I mean, that's that's first and foremost. Um, as part of that, we're committed to high quality and realism. I mean, so we're not going to cut corners. Um, that's what we're known for. And we're going to continue to go down that path. Um, I see a lot of forum posts and things like that, but. Again, first and foremost, uh, quality, realism, and providing a, a true uh, sim racing experience. Um, we're, committed, we're committed to look for ways to add new sim races to our sport, so we have to keep that in mind as well. Um, and everyone has a different idea of what they're looking sim racing to be and what, they're, what their experience they're looking for. And what we're trying to do here at iRacing is to provide a full experience no matter what your interest is, uh, no matter what you're looking to get out of sim racing. And that's important to keep in mind that something that uh, you might not uh, really enjoy that you know, 3,000 other people might, might have a great time doing. So the way the service is being designed and developed is do what you like to do, have fun doing it. Um, and uh, if there's things on it that you don't like, uh, then that's okay. They're not going to get in your way. You can still have a ball doing what you like to do and uh, competing. You know, obviously we're working on uh, product uh, improvements all the time. You guys all know about the tire model and uh, the sound and graphical uh, improvements being uh, worked on, uh, damage repair, pitting, uh, dynamic motion and dyna uh, weather and things like that. So all, those are all things that are coming down the road. Um, and things to uh, make things, and uh, also other uh, developments to make things easier for new sim races to join the service. So we're also trying to get new people to join our sport. Um, and it's important that we uh, keep those folks in mind um, as well as we move forward here. We're always looking for new partners, new opportunities for sim racers. I've already said that. Uh, we, uh, we're about to sign the LMP2 car, so that, that's pretty cool. We're looking uh, at uh, doing deals with a couple other major uh, manufacturers. We're also looking at uh, uh, adding some pretty cool new tracks in the, in the future. But uh, uh, the main thing is we're going to keep making this better and better. And uh, I just, again, I want to thank all of our members for, uh, for a great 2010. Thanks for your support. And uh, we look forward to uh, 
to uh, many more years of uh, sim racing down the road. Thanks.